Hey piano people! In today's video, I'm going to go over five common problems in piano technique with solutions. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to give you those solutions so that you can sound better today. Now, I just did a live stream a couple of weeks ago that was all about piano technique, and I'm going to link that in the description below. And in that live stream, I covered very specific ways to utilize your body to produce specific sounds on the piano. But in today's video, I'm going to give you actually like five specific things that come up in piano playing that require certain techniques, and I'm going to share those techniques and practice suggestions with you so that you can accomplish the specific things in piano that you're trying to accomplish. The first thing we're going to talk about is articulation and how to utilize technique to get the proper articulation that you want. Then we're going to talk about pedaling. We're going to talk about dynamic contrast, Alberti bass, and ornaments. So let's dive in. So articulations are symbols in our music that tell us how to articulate certain notes. So we have like staccatos, legatos, accents, two note slurs. And oftentimes when people see articulations in their score, they try to play a note different and they try to kind of force the sound out of the piano. And I see this a lot when people are trying to play staccato. Like they'll like press the note a little bit harder and with a little bit more stress behind it to try to make it shorter and detached. But really, if we can utilize flexibility specifically in our wrist, it's gonna help us create much smoother and more graceful and more effective articulations. So when we're trying to do two note slurs or legatos, or accents, really any of the articulations, we want to make sure that we keep a loose and flexible wrist. And that means that we want our wrist to be neutral, parallel to the floor, but we want to be able to come down and up as needed. So for staccatos, I can do little tiny wrist flicks coming up and down. For legatos, I can do a little bit of a wrist curve to help me stay smooth and connected. For two note slurs, I'm gonna start from above and I'm gonna drop down and then lift up. And for accents, I'm gonna make sure to drop with a little more force. You can see my wrist is nice and flexible and loose. And keeping a wrist loose and utilizing our wrist in that flexible up and down motion is really essential for creating a great tone quality and for achieving those articulations that we're trying to play. Now in that live stream, I covered several exercises that you can implement into your piano practice to help you gain that flexibility and that looseness in the wrist. And so I'll link that in the description below. You can check the replay out of that live stream to get those exercises and start working those into your practice. Now pedaling is very tricky and pedaling is one of the things in piano that I see done incorrectly the most often. And I actually just had a video come out a couple weeks ago about piano pedal technique and specifically how to utilize the pedal, how to align yourself so that you can play the pedal correctly and things to make sure that you do and don't do when you're using the pedal. So I'll link that in the description as well. But with the piano pedal, I'm going to leave you with kind of one tip and that is don't overdo the pedal and don't overdo the motion. Oftentimes I see people moving their entire leg or lifting their entire foot off the pedal. And for proper piano pedal technique, we really want to make sure that our foot stays on the pedal and then it's really tiny motions that we're utilizing when we are using the pedal. We also want to make sure with our piano pedal that we don't just push the pedal down and hold it down for the entire piece. Our foot is another appendage that we have to coordinate with the rest of our body and with all of the things that we're already thinking about. So it's so important to follow the pedaling marks or to come up with pedaling marks that create a beautiful sound and not a sound that is kind of like mushy with too much pedal. And again, in that video that I recorded, I talk about a lot of ways to do this specifically. So if you feel like pedaling for you is one of those things, then I would say start by making sure that you're utilizing proper pedal technique, those little tiny motions, and don't overdo it and just keep the pedal down. And then check out that other video for some more tips. All right, the third thing is dynamic contrast. And dynamic contrast is kind of like really the core of music, right? When we think about musical expression and the way that music makes us feel, oftentimes those feelings are solicited by large dynamic extremes or shifts in mood and that drama that we hear in music. So when we're playing, it's really important for us to utilize those dynamic contrasts in our playing. And when we talk 
about dynamics, the number one thing that we need to think about is the weight of our arms. It doesn't matter what dynamic you're trying to play, it all has to do with utilizing the weight of your arms. It's not our fingers pressing the keys by themselves that produces a good tone at the piano. It's the weight of our arm dropping into every single key. In that live stream I referenced that is linked in the description, I go over a couple of exercises on how to practice dynamics and how to implement some dynamic contrasts into your playing. And the one place that you can start right now is to just be as extreme as possible. Oftentimes when I am working with people, the biggest issue with dynamics is they're just thinking on too small of a scale. We really need to exaggerate the drama so that it gets communicated to someone else. Oftentimes, because we know in our heads what we want something to sound like, and maybe we've heard the piece a lot of times, we can hear it as we want it to sound and not actually hear what's coming out of the piano. And this oftentimes results in people thinking that they are doing a lot of dynamics and thinking that they have all of those contrasts when really those are kind of all in their ear in here but they're not coming out of the piano. So whatever you're intending to do, exaggerate it a ton and record yourself playing and play it back to yourself and see if your dynamic plan is actually coming through in how you sound. As a fourth thing, we've got Alberti bass. And Alberti bass is hard. And I do have an entire video that's all about Alberti bass and I'll link that in the description below. But I'm gonna give you some great tips today. When you're practicing Alberti bass, I want you to think about a wrist rotation like this. It's almost like if I had a pen attached to my pinky and a pen attached to my thumb, I'd be drawing little parentheses that were holding my hand on the inside of these parentheses. And that wrist rotation is what you need to utilize for Alberti bass. It's gonna help you be lighter, it's gonna help you be faster, and it's gonna help everything sound so much more even. Those are the common areas that people need to improve when I meet them and they're playing Alberti bass, is it's usually too heavy or it's uneven or it's too loud. And so to fix those things, just utilize that little wrist rotation and go ahead and practice that with your Alberti bass. It will clear up a lot of problems, a very simple technical thing that you can implement right now. All right, lastly, we've got ornaments, which warns its own video. And I have a video on ornaments. I'll link that in the description below. But with ornaments, we often really want Again, like Alberti bass, that light and fast sound. And so with ornaments, we have to think about a light touch. We want to make sure that when we're playing in when we're playing ornaments, regardless of the ornament, that we are staying so loose and flexible. And that's the number one area where I see people go wrong with ornaments is they just tighten up and they have tension creep into their wrists or their shoulders or anywhere in their body. And that just doesn't serve us when we're trying to play ornaments. So if you're trilling, you can utilize that same little wrist rotation from Alberti bass. If it's an ornament that's other than a trill, I would say stay nice and loose and add some of that wrist flexibility where you drop into the ornament and then come off of the ornament with grace. And that's gonna help you sound so much better and more musical with your ornaments. Let me know in the comments below which one of these you struggle with the most. And if you start testing out some of these techniques and they work, let me know that too. I would love to hear how it's going for you in your practice. Happy practicing. If you're liking this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can help our content rise to the top. This will help other people benefit from it as well. And if you're ready to take your piano playing to the next level, join me in the Casual to Confident Piano Player program where we meet face to face several times per month to address your specific challenges in your specific piano playing. I'll see you there.